I want to go ahead and say and make this clear that the work that Mike Zulo is doing on this is just it's it is his personal work. It is in no way connected to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office or the cold case posse or the Obama fraud case. It's just that Mike Zulo has become somewhat of a of a uh, of, of an expert in this uh, understanding of natural born citizen. And I mean, he has researched this from top to bottom. He has reams and reams and notebooks full of stuff. He is spoken to it all over national international radio uh and 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 has written to it um and and is prepared to testify to it when that time comes so because of his expertise in this field Along comes this presidential election, and along comes this guy named Ted Cruz. And, of course, we had Marco Rubio, but he's he's out now. But Ted Cruz, who is a kind of a front-runner contender, and Donald Trump is the first person to out him, you know, publicly like this, as not being eligible, not being natural-born. Now, Donald Trump also outed Barack Obama, if you'll remember. It's because of Donald Trump that Barack Obama posted this fraudulent, fabricated uh, certificate on the government White House website. So Donald Trump outed Ted Cruz, and people just started really piling into this and, and investigating the possibility of, well, is the guy is the guy not eligible? Is this deja vu all over again? Are we going to go through this again? Well, it seems like we are. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with Ted Cruz, whether or not Donald Trump will, will get enough delegates that uh, Ted Cruz won't even have a chance, or if there's going to be some kind of brokered convention or some other shenanigans. Who knows? Uh, Don, uh, you know, Ted Cruz may drop out before I mean, there there is some talk of that because he knows he's not going to get the delegates. But in the meantime, people keep digging into this, and Mike Zulo being one of them, using his investigative brain and all of the information that he has amassed, the education he has received on this issue of natural born, and now uh, he is convinced, and he and I speak a lot, and I'm convinced, and as are millions of other Americans, that... Ted Cruz is not eligible to be the president of the United States. And as a matter of fact, some who should have could easily produce to prove that he is a natural born citizen. He refuses to do so. And we'll talk about all of that so much more, plus the very latest uh, that Mike Zulo is speaking to that has been uncovered. Uh, most of you that are listening probably have never heard what you're going to hear in the next few moments. Mike Zulo, are you with us? I am, Carl. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, listen, Mike, this is absolutely fascinating. You and I were talking off air earlier today and uh, then just a few moments ago. On the phone right here in the station, and uh, th this is amazing. I I'm just going to set it up just a little bit, then I just want to let you run with it. I'll interject as we move along, but you've got a lot of information to share, and I know our people want to hear what you have uh, uncovered and or have investigated in this. And again, this is no connection at all to Sheriff Arpaio, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, the cold case posse, Obama fraud case. This is just you, because of what you know and how much you know about this, you're watching this Ted Cruz thing unfold, and you're your eyes have gotten big again, and you're scratching your head again, right? <laughs> oh, my God, Carl, you can't make this stuff up. I, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's obviously, well, I, I'll save that speculation for later. But the bottom, it, it, we're going to begin with a narrative about Ted Cruz's mother, Ted Cruz's birth, and names that were used on birth certificates and prior husbands and and Rafael Cruz coming into the picture, but yet his name, Ted's mama didn't want his name on the birth certificate. I mean, this is unfreaking believable. You you take it from there. Just start at the beginning for folks that are listening that don't have a clue what we're talking about. You know, Carl, it really is unbelievable. You would never think in a presidential campaign you would have to be scrutinizing the parents of a potential president for the United States of America, but I guess we live in some different times. Yeah. And I think I was on a phone call with you, our private phone call uh, a day, uh, excuse me, a week or two ago, and I told you that I had gotten a call and I was receiving some privy to information yes. um, that I couldn't disclose how we got it, um, and I did receive that information. Mm -hmm. Let me just lay this out for you. Uh, Ted Cruz's mother, Eleanor, mm -hmm. she wasn't married only to Mr. Cruz. She was married before. Earlier on in her life, in 1956, 
she married an individual named Alan Wilson of Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. They subsequently moved to the U.K. for employment purposes. And in around 1963, it's reported that they divorced. In 1966, Eleanor, who's now using the last name Wilson, her maiden name was Dara. Okay, now, now, now wait just a moment. Let me spell this for folks. Dara, D-A-R-R-A-G-H. Dara. Correct. Eleanor right. Dara, married to a Mr. Wilson first. Now, did you say his, his name was Alan, right? Alan Wilson. Okay, married in Fort Worth in 56. They then moved uh, after they graduated school, got jobs. They got jobs in England, so they moved to England, and then go go from there. All right, they, they moved there in 1960, 1960 for employment mm-hmm. purposes. Mm-hmm. 1963, it's alleged that they are divorced at that time. Okay. In 1966, mm-hmm. Eleanor Wilson has a baby boy. Mm-hmm. His name is Michael. Mm-hmm. Michael subsequently dies December 7th of that same year. Okay. Um, it's attributed to Mr. Crew that he died of crib death. Okay. I told you that that's not correct. Um, as this story unfolds, I received documentation where I have out of the UK the birth certificate and the death certificate for baby Michael Wilson. Mm-hmm. And here's where it gets very strange. On the birth certificate, the child's name is Michael Dara. Mm-hmm. And it shows the father as Alan Wilson. It shows the informant bringing forth this information of this birth is Elizabeth, uh, Eleanor Elizabeth Wilson, Mm -hmm. the mother, Mm -hmm. living at what looks like to be 5A Milburn Grove, someplace over there. And that's the birth certificate for the child. Okay, that's for Michael, who would have been Ted Cruz's. That's for Mike. Yeah, and, and Ted's not born yet. This is Michael, the child that died. Correct. Okay. In December, the child passes away. Okay. And like I said earlier, it's reported in Ted Cruz's memoirs that this was attributed to crib death. The child's name on the death certificate, however, is now Michael Wilson. The reporting person is Alan Wilson, and he gives an address that looks like 38 Courtfield Garden, someplace over there. Mm-hmm. So it's a different address, different reporting person. What's very, very perturbing about this up to this point is a news agency, I believe in Dallas, got a hold of Alan Wilson. Mm -hmm. And in this interview, Mr. Wilson says that he was estranged from Eleanor, had no idea that she was pregnant, that he had found out she was pregnant by by a happenstance, that he went to the same hospital where she was being treated. He was being treated for something unrelated, didn't even know she was there, and a nurse told him that your wife is here and that she was pregnant. And he said, look, that's not my wife. We're, we're, we're divorced, but I didn't have no idea she was pregnant. Okay, now stop just a moment. So this, this pregnancy you're talking about would have been Ted Cruz? No. This pregnancy. We're still, we're still on Michael. We're still on Michael. Okay, we're still on Michael. So they're at the hospital by happenstance. Okay, go ahead. In England. In no, England. Over in the UK. Right. Okay. This is all in the UK. This is almost a decade before Ted Cruz is born, something right. to that effect, or half a decade before Ted Cruz is born. Right. So by happenstance, he finds this out. Later on, he's contacted by Eleanor, mm-hmm. who asked him if he could use, or if she could use, his last name on the baby's death certificate, which was a little shocking to him because they were divorced, and according to him, she was living on her own, and he had never met the baby. Mm -hmm. But he allowed her to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's how the name of her estranged husband now appears on a death certificate, but it is different than what appears on the birth certificate. She's given this baby a new identity. Okay. So she gave the baby a new identity. Now, this is Michael's brother who passes. I mean, excuse me, Ted's brother, Michael, who passes. Okay, go ahead. Would have been his half-brother, correct. Yeah, yes. Okay, go ahead. Now what happened, and this becomes important as it relates to Ted Cruz. Yeah. Eleanor realizes that by some 
force that she needs to report the death of a deceased American citizen. Right. So she goes over to the consulate over there, the United States consulate in the UK, mm-hmm. and she reports the death of baby Michael. Mm-hmm. And what she does is she shows herself as the mother. Mm-hmm. She shows Alan Wilson as the father, but she shows them both now residing at the same address. And this is 10 to of 67. Mm-hmm. So she's showing them as being together, living at the same address on this official document. Mm-hmm. There's also a notation there that there's reference to this baby being listed on Eleanor's passport. It gives the passport number. Wow. Issued from London at 10 3 of 66. All right, let's do this. We've got to take a break. This is a good place because when we come back, we're going to tie up the loose ends on Michael. Then we're going to extrapolate all of this to Ted Cruz and his identification papers. Right, Mike? Yes, we are. Absolutely. Folks, you're listening to Freedom Friday. You won't hear this anywhere else today. You're not going to turn on Fox News and hear this. But you don't go anywhere. It gets better in the next few seconds. We're going to find out what all of this has to do with Ted Cruz and his possible ineligibility to be running for president. We'll be right back. Freedom Friday. Carl Gallup's Mike Zulo is in the house today. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back, America. My guest this afternoon is Mike Zulo. Uh, welcome back, Mike Zulo. Hi, Carl. All right. Hey, hey, folks, now listen. Here's where we left off at the break. So Mike Zulo and, and others that he's working with, they've uncovered the fact, and they've got all the details, and it, it is a little complex. Mike asked me when we went off the line, he said, was that too, you know, complex over, over the radio? And it, it's tough to lay out complex concepts with only words over the radio while people are driving or working and kind of half listening. So we understand that. So just hang in here with us. But the bottom line is, Ted Cruz's mom, Eleanor, had a child five, four or five years before Ted Cruz to another man that's not Ted Cruz's father. She was married to this guy, so she's multiple marriages. That, that's fine. We're not judging her on that or anything. It's just that we've uncovered the fact that she went through this long extrapolated, c- c- discombobulated process of changing this baby's identity. The baby eventually died, sadly. But she she went to the American consulate. Uh, she calls the uh, the guy she used to be married to, but who more than likely was not the father. At least he says that. But yet wants to use his name on the birth certificate, death certificate. I mean, it's just it's so discombobulated. So she's in the process of changing identities of a child. And now, Mike, pick up from there and tell us how this all relates to Ted Cruz and what happens with that story as it continues. Well, Carl, if we, we, we stopped at the uh, reporting to the U.S. consulate of yes. that birth, and that's why I want to go once with you on, on Eleanor in this situation. In Ted Cruz's book, he points to this as being such a tra- tra- tragic event, which it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the death of a child is just horrendous. Mm-hmm. But they attribute it to crib death. Mm-hmm. However, on the death certificate, it states that the child died of bronchitis. Mm-hmm. Now, you know us from being a cop, and I know us from being a cop. I, I don't know if you got it. Then we, used to, we got it in homicide training. Crib death is something that you have to be very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Crib death is something that has this instant happens, instantaneous, and you don't really have any other cause. There's nothing else going on there. It's just something that happens. Right. Bronchitis is something that takes a little while to cultivate. Mm-hmm. So you would have to start to think that this child was sick and was denied medical attention prior to something happening to this kid. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Not that it relates to anything to Ted, but it's just a discrepancy, and I apologize if this is a little haphazard. I'm reading this stuff off a document. They didn't have time to make a a timeline up. But going forward to now the birth of Ted Cruz, Mm -hmm. on Ted Cruz's released birth certificate out of Canada, it states the father is Raphael B. Cruz, and it states the mother as Eleanor E. or Eleanor Elizabeth Wilson. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Now, Carl, I'm going to ask you, what does that say to you or tell you as a cop? Again. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 so she's supposed to be married to Ted Cruz, but she's listing her last name as Wilson, which was the name she had to the guy that she's divorced from. And 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 she she has been to an American embassy to record a death, so she knows the process of identifying children and their citizenship and birth certificates and death certificates. So she's not ignorant to that. I mean, it tells me all of that. What else? Well, you're, you're right. I and mean, that's the way my mind started to work. If I have you reporting the death of your first child at an American consulate, but now I have a birth certificate where purportedly you were just married. It's purported in 1969 to Mr. Cruz. Mm-hmm. Yet on the birth of your second son, you're still using the name of your estranged husband, Mm -hmm. that you technically, according, and it's been alleged, that you divorced in 1963, and in 1970, you're still using that name? Highly suspicious. Obviously, here we go again with somebody else using different names for whatever purpose, I don't know, but we all know women have the ability to use maiden names, past married names, and current names. Mm -hmm. But on the birth of your second child to now your second husband, that you should have still been in the, quote, honeymoon phase, Mm -hmm. very suspicious you're doing that. And it also says to me that you knew full full well and good that you had to report this birth to a consulate because you did the death of your child. And I'm sure she was apprised of that, which is why she needed to use Wilson's name for Michael. Yeah. Yeah. She needed a name for a father rather than unknown. Right. So so exactly. So she knew, so she's familiar with the consulate process of claiming citizenship. If she wanted t- little baby Ted to be an American citizen, she knew how to do it. She cuz she'd already done this before with the death certificate and everything. But And n- you know, I'm going to go out on a little limb here, Carl. I could only you know, look, I, I could only put myself in her, her situation. Mm-hmm. But now that the passing of this child, obviously there's something wrong with whoever the father was. Didn't want any connection to this child. Right. So she had to go back in time and use a different name on a death cert. But I would think that would be for purposes of probably bringing back the remains to the United States at some time. She may have been planning to leave. Right the UK at that point and needed to do this. Right. But you get intimately familiar with this process right. as you go through this. Right. And you would be advised of what to do on births right. and death right. as a result. Well, and here's the thing. We literally have two minutes. And so the bottom line is now we have Ted Cruz with all of this discombobulated mumbo jumbo in his background, born on Canadian soil. We have no documentation in our hands that his mother ever went and registered him as an American citizen at the consulate. We know he has a Canadian birth certificate. We know he was a Canadian citizen because he just renounced it. We know he eventually got some kind of an American citizenship. There's speculation he might have gotten it under 1986 Ronald Reagan's amnesty uh, grant because by then he was back in the United. He was in the United States with his parents as a small child. But post an email. For example, Sharon Rondu, the editor, they have filed 12 or more Freedom of Information Act with the Cruz camp papers to just prove to settle this matter. Just like Sheriff Arpaio asked for the Obama camp, just give us a birth certificate with a raised seal on it and show us the original documents and we can drop all of this. Eight years later, they've never done it. Now, Ted Cruz and his camp have refused to release any American embassy documents proving that he had American citizenship at birth, more than likely because he didn't have American citizenship. That's my speculation. Well, Ted Cruz is taking a big gamble here. He's going to gamble that he can get for a judge at the Supreme Court and argue or have someone argue on his behalf that he's a natural-born citizen. Well, that has never been accomplished. And his, his position is relatively weak as far as that is concerned. Yeah. Once those guys start going back into the history, if they ever take this issue up, I don't think he's going to be too successful on yeah. that. Donald Trump is out there taunting him 
calling him lion Ted Cruz, the biggest liar I've ever known is what Trump says over and over and over on TV, on radio, at speeches, at public forums. And he knows. And, t and Trump says the guy is not eligible. And you know Trump with his billions. If Mike Zulo can find this stuff out, and, and, and Mike and I and others, and Sharon Rondu and others, if we can find this stuff out, don't you know that, um, that Donald Trump with his billions can hire investigators, make phone calls? He's got connections all over the world. And then yet Donald Trump continually calls Ted Cruz, lying Ted Cruz, the biggest liar I've ever known. And 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 he continually questions his eligibility to even be running. So in the meantime, we kind of dropped off at the bottom of the first hour. And in the meantime, Mike Shoesmith was scheduled to come on. Well, he emailed me and then called me and said, Keep Mike Zulo on. This is awesome. This is new stuff. People need to know this. So I called Mike Zulo and said, would you come back on? And he graciously agreed. So Mike Zulo is back in the house, and we're going to keep talking about this stuff. Mike, are you connected with us? I am, Carl. Okay, fantastic. And thank you, Mike Shoesmith. I know that you're listening. Uh, thank you for being so gracious, because th this is good stuff, uh, Mike Zulo. This is this is new to most of our listeners. Uh, I know it's not brand new to you, because you've been working on it for a while, and Sharon Rondu and others, And uh, uh, but, but it is new to a lot of our listeners, and will be to millions of Americans as we get this word out over the next couple of days. So let me just ask you, Mike. Can you do a brief synopsis without going through all the nitty gritty details, just the high points of of from Eleanor, Dara, you know, and the death of the first child and the divorce of the first husband and then bring it up to Ted Cruz and then let's keep going from there. Okay, really quick. Dara graduates university in 1956, marries in 1960 an individual from Texas, Alan Wilson. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me back up. She she actually graduated university and married in 1956 at the age of 21. Mm -hmm. In 1960, husband and wife, then Alan Wilson, they moved to the UK for employment. In 1963 or thereabout, they separate and divorce. In 1966, she gives birth to her first child, Michael, who now his last name is Wilson, but was reported on the birth certificate as being Michael Dara, but reported on the death certificate as being Michael Wilson. Um, that child dies after six months of life, and purportedly um, Dara, now Wilson, calls up Alan Wilson, her estranged husband, and asks if he could be listed as the father of Michael Wilson. Even though they've been separated now for three years. And he didn't even know that she was pregnant. Right. And she had never even met the baby. Right. But is what's very, very peculiar about the documentation that we received, and this documentation we received, it look, it looks to be official. It has state seals. It has, you know, dates of uh, April that it was acquired from the U.K. Um, it shows Mr. Wilson, Alan Wilson, as the informant. It needs the signature, description, and residence of the informant on the death certificate. So not only did he agree to use the name, that's been confirmed, but what was missing in the story that was picked up about him was that he had to go personally and make a representation on this death certificate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a little more to this story than, than meeting the eye. And then you have to fast forward a little, a little, a little bit here. She goes to the consulate over in the UK, and she is the one. It's not Alan Wilson. It is her registering the death of an American citizen, the now newly named Michael Wilson. Mm -hmm. And why I'm saying he's newly named Michael Wilson is because Eleanor registered the birth of that child as Michael. Dara, mm -hmm. not Michael Wilson. Yeah, because she had later, she'd been divorced she from Wilson for three David. years. Yeah, yeah, they were estranged. He had no idea. He was actually shocked to find out she was even pregnant. Right. In the article that was written uh, during this telephone interview with him, he says that, you know, he didn't really think about 
not letting her use the name, but he's very nondescript as to what the reason would be. He doesn't give the reason out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously you don't have to be, you know, a, a mathematician here to figure this out. It's either you don't know who the father is, or wherever the father is wants nothing to do with this, right? Or couldn't claim responsibility for whatever reason, right? But John- and, and Carl, I want to be careful as I go here, but you got to remember the time frame. We're talking about the mid '60s in the UK. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was all free love, power child, power flower, whatever that stuff is they were doing back then. <laughs> Bunch of That's hippies. All that <laughs> Bunch of hippies. <laughs> yeah, brother. You know, you want a heap of but trouble, what, boy. What, Really, really perturbing about this is the use of different identity. Right. And and the fact that she knew how to do that and the fact that she knew how to go to the American consulate and the fact that she knew how to register an American birth. She knew how to register an American citizen's death on foreign soil. She had done all of this before. She has done all this before. And, and you know, the, the ability just to give somebody an identity, I mean, let's back up at this. Let's understand what's really transpired here. You have an individual who is not the biological father now making a claim that he is the biological father as he reports a death on an official document. Right. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't do that kind of stuff. Right. And then you have her, you know, at the consulate representing them as really as husband and wife, even using the same address that she's been estranged from. Right. And that's evident on the birth certificate. She uses a different address when the child Michael was first born and reported as Michael Dara. She has a different address than what's on the death certificate. All right. Now, before we get behind the eight ball on time again, let's jump forward to Ted Cruz. Now, she's in Canada and she marries Rafael Cruz, but when she gives birth to Ted on the birth certificate, the Canadian birth certificate, she uses the last name from the dude she divorced in England. And, and here's this is something I, I want to be I want to be gracious here. There there doesn't seem to be any evidence of a marriage certificate in 1969 to to, to Rafael Cruz to Rafael Cruz, wedding, and Eleanor, Elizabeth, Dara, and or Wilson. There doesn't seem to be any document that purports that. So you have to start to wonder, is this another out-of-wedlock birth? Right. I, I, I don't know. And it could I don't be, know. And, and Ted Cruz couldn't help that. But, but, no. tell, tell how that's apropos to this situation of eligibility. Well, the fact of the matter is, as far as Ted Cruz is concerned he's already stated that he's got an american mother right the the situation here is there's no way to ascertain did eleanor elizabeth wilson or did eleanor elizabeth dara ever renounce american citizenship while she was living in canada now there's information that she was on the voter rolls as eleanor e cruz so at some point in time, she did take the name Cruz. So you have her in Canada using the name Cruz when it's convenient, but yet on this birth document, she doesn't. So it makes you I'm sorry, to Mike, think. Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, we lost you. When you said yet on this birth document, then you went away. What did you say? On this birth document, she doesn't use the name Cruz. Yeah. She uses Wilson. Yeah. But on the voter rolls, her name Cruz, Eleanor Cruz, is present. And most importantly, we have no documentation yet to prove that she then went and registered little Teddy as an American citizen at the American consulate in Canada. We have no documentation of that. So she knows well, how to do that because she's already done it. So if she didn't do that, then Ted Cruz was not an American citizen at birth. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl. As far as I can tell Ted Cruz, if he had that document, he would have been throwing that in our face along with his Canadian birth certificate. A long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. Which would have bolstered his position a little better. Yes. I don't think it would have propelled him to natural born. I mean, let's let's face facts. Aside from the criteria that has 
been amended in the Constitution where you can be natural born by virtue of American parents on assignment overseas to being in service to the United States government in military capacity, born on a military installation, um, he doesn't have that ability. Right. He can't say that. Right. They were not in the employ of the United States government while they were in Canada. You could even make another leap here. And then, look, this is speculation. I want to be really clear of that. But this is a woman who was abandoned by her husband after the birth of Ted Cruz, where he goes back to Texas. All right, stop, she Mike. Stop, in- stop. We lost you again. This is a woman that was abandoned. Then take it up from there. She was abandoned, her and her son, in Canada, where Raphael departs and goes his own way back to the United States. Right. Now, she remained there, which kind of leads you to believe that she has been, you know, she's matriculated into Canadian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It also would kind of suggest that she maybe never had an intention of going back to the United States, Mm -hmm. so she never bothered going to the council, council there to see about registering Ted as an American, because perhaps she herself was going to become a Canadian citizen. Right. And that goes to allegiances. Don't forget, I think I said this on your radio show in the past, you know, the United States, as far as Rafael Cruz was concerned, was his third pick. Right. Daddy, that's right. It was Cuba and then Canada and then finally the United States. And that's very important. Mike, we've got to take a time out. When we come back, we'll wrap this up and we'll start right there. OK, Mike? OK. All right, folks, don't you go anywhere. We got Mike Zulo on the line with this fascinating information about Ted Cruz, his mother, her past, Rafael Cruz, their past, their marriages, uh, you know, births, using different names, registering different names, changing identities at consulates. Oh, my gosh. This sounds like the Obama case on steroids. We'll be back in just a moment. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Leftist liberals hate him. Atheists despise him. Evolutionists and socialists fear him. Certain other talk show hosts are jealous of him. The White House administration knows who he is. But this is why you listen to Carl. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallows, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right. We're back. Freedom Friday, Carl Gallup. So glad that you're with us. Mike Zuglo on the line with us. So, Mike, we left off. We left everyone hanging with. So now we've gone through this whole narrative of Eleanor Dara Wilson Cruz, uh, her past and the death of a child. Sad, a sad situation. But her knowledge of how to record a birth at an American embassy to get American citizenship, how to record a death to have an American uh, uh, death at the, the embassy. Uh, she divorces this dude. She comes to Canada. In the meantime, she has another child named Teddy uh, to a guy supposedly named Rafael Cruz, but yet on the birth certificate, the Canadian birth certificate, she doesn't say uh, Teddy Cruz is born to, uh, by Mama Eleanor Cruz. She, no, she says by Eleanor Wilson, the name of the dude she left in Great Britain whom she's been divorced from for years. Why is that? And then we have the question of, did she go to the embassy in Canada and register Teddy as an American citizen? Did she ever have any intentions of becoming an American citizen? And that's where we left off. So you were saying she probably didn't have any intentions of it. No, because you would have to start to conclude that they were, now again, purportedly, I mean, we don't know if they were ever really married or not. I'm going to assume they were. But, um, you know, he's becoming a Canadian citizen. Mm-hmm. He became a Canadian citizen. Raphael Cruz, Daddy Cruz, the father, mm-hmm. you know, declared allegiance to Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to wonder where was she in that mix? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know. Now, Alan Wilson wouldn't really help her in that situation because he was an American, right? And he claimed in the interview that neither of them became British citizens, right? So that wouldn't have helped her by taking right. his name. Right. So there has to be another reason here. Something else is, is going on right. here. Right. But this whole birth certificate thing of Ted Cruz with two different last names, boy, right. that's, that's a, a question that 
you know, I really love oh, to get oh, yeah. the answer. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to speculate here, but you got to speculate that. So you got Mama, who's been in Great Britain. She's been divorced. She's been through one situation. She's lost a child. Bless her heart. Now she's in Canada. She's had another baby, little Teddy. The guy she had him with, supposedly, Raphael, she's not even using his last name for herself on the birth certificate. Perhaps they weren't married. Maybe that's why she had to do that. But then the guy, apparently, they do get married because they start using the same last names. But then her husband, Raphael, goes and makes himself a Canadian citizen, not an American citizen, a Canadian citizen. So you would have to assume, and this is only an assumption, that she would have done the same thing. I mean, she hasn't been in America now for years. She hasn't really claimed any allegiance to America. She's been in Great Britain and Canada. Now she's married a guy who's just sworn allegiance to Canada. She's given birth to her second child on Canadian soil. Why would she not also go and say, okay, I'm a Canadian citizen. And so now we've got her son running for president and we're saying, hey, show us the paperwork where you were registered as an American citizen and Ted Cruz refuses to do so. And, you know, I, I know I know that there's other people out there, but Sharon Rondu from the Post and Email has been pounding this. And, you know, no door gets open. Canada won't release any information without written consent. Um, anywhere you go on this issue, you need written consent. It's It's Obama all over again. On steroids. And why wouldn't Ted Cruz just release it? You would. I would. Any reasonable, lawful citizen would be glad to. I would be, if I was Ted Cruz, I would be glad to release it to shut Donald Trump's mouth and to embarrass him because he's continually saying I'm not eligible and he's calling me lying Ted Cruz, the biggest liar he's ever known. I would produce the documentation and say, oh yeah, now you're the biggest fool America has ever known. But he won't do it and I contend it's because he can't do it. And, you know, Carl, there are, and, and we have individuals within the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, when I was doing that investigation, again, this is nothing to do with Maricopa County Sheriff's Office right. or Sheriff Arpaio. This is just, it's in my face, and it's my, my nature to start looking into stuff like this. But, um, you know, we have individuals that are, are deputy sheriffs that were born abroad, military situations, and they had to have their births was reported. That's right. To an American embassy, even though That's right. they fulfilled the obligation. That's right. I've got people in my church. Yeah, I've got people in my church that had to do the same thing. They were in the military or they were, you know, in medical school abroad, et cetera, et cetera. But they had to go register their children and their children have grown up in my church. They're American citizens, but they were registered in U.S. embassies on foreign soil. And, and you know, Carl, I can't I have a difficult time getting past this now where Rafael Cruz, Daddy, Daddy Cruz, says that he pronounced declarations over his son from a very young age, that he was destined for greatness, and that he shoved the Constitution down the kid's throat and did all this political brainwashing. Because the way it looks to me now, yeah. Ted Cruz cannot win the election the way an election is believed to have been won right. in the United States. Right. Now he's doing some backdoor maneuver, trying to position himself yeah. to basically steal it. Yeah, And, and so that's pure pure selfish political motivation. Yeah. yeah, we've got 45 seconds. So let me present you with a scenario. All this new information, let's just forget all of that, and which you really can't. But let's just say, okay, so under what situation is a guy born parents were not in the military or under service of the government to maybe an American mom, we don't know, to a father who's a Cuban citizen, and the baby has a Canadian birth certificate, and then the baby grows up to be a man, and he runs for president, and he renounces his Canadian citizenship just before he's running for president, and won't turn over documents showing that he was registered at the American Embassy to be an American citizen at birth, under what conditions is that natural born? You know, Carl, I'd like to buy It Isn't for 200 please. <laughs> Thank you. <Because laughs> it ain't. <laughs>